Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we are incredibly close, at this point, to finalizing the design of our Corvette. So we're going to go ahead and load this up here. This is what we've come up with here. And I honestly feel like we should drop our air brakes. Hang on, this is the autosave version. We want this version, actually. There we go. That's more like it. So we have the air brakes on here. I'm going to drop the air brakes off of these engines. And then we've got our air brakes on here. That's all well and good. We are going to authority limit this to, say, 7 degrees on either side. And down to 7 degrees. And we're going to turn on the pitch and the yaw. We'll see what that actually ends up doing. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to turn that off. I changed my mind on that. We've been pretty consistently able to get to space with this. So that is, I think, what we're going to go with. We're using these for re-entry. And we're also using our extra parachutes that we added over here for additional stability. Now, we may want to add in a pair of extra radial mount parachutes, and I think that that's not a terrible idea. If we were to drop those in, say, somewhere around here, and we would just have them sitting like so and move them down a little bit here. More like that. Okay, and then these chutes would move off into their own section along with this one, and then all the drogues would be on their own. Okay, let's double check our staging here. And then those drop off, and the next ones fire. Those then drop off, and the interior engines fire. Those then drop off, and then parachutes. Okay, looks good to me. So let's go ahead and launch this. This is a real launch. This is entirely unsimulated. If it blows up, it blows up. Let's see what happens. Throttle up, SAS on, pitch up, and off we go. We're veering off, correcting for that. I believe that veering is just a physics bug, by the way. So we're going to take off here in a moment. Here we go. Fantastic. And we're aiming for 45 degrees. Right about here. Next set of engines. Let's switch over to Apoapsis mode here so that we can see how high up our Apoapsis currently is. It's only two kilometers right now. I mean, we're not moving all that quickly. And we're going to be ditching these now. And up we go with our liquid fuel. Fantastic. We're going to continue going a little bit more nose up as we burn out this fuel. And that's completely expected and normal. I did not do this. That was a kind of big mistake, actually. Do we abort this flight? I mean, we don't really have a way to abort the flight. That was a big mistake. That was a lot of unnecessary drag. If we don't make it into space, we should be able to at least test the landing here. But that was a lot of unnecessary drag that I forgot to raise up our landing gear. We'll find out if it's enough. I have a sneaking suspicion. Okay, that didn't blow up anything important. Good. So we're going to try to hold about here. And we'll see if that added drag added up to anything major. So far, our apoapsis is looking quasi-reasonable, I'd say. So that's good. 40 kilometers currently. Yeah, I think we're okay here.
We just switched over into orbital mode. We have about 760 meters per second of orbital mode right now. Orbital mode velocity. And yeah, that seems to be fine. I'm definitely kicking myself for not pulling up the landing gear, but all in all, that should be a relatively minor thing. I'm going to put nose down a little bit here. Not a lot, just a little. Trying to hit that 45 degree marker. And let's see if this is our successful flight here. 50 kilometer apoapsis now. That's good. I think we're solid here. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're solid here. Fifty three kilometers. Fifty four. T minus 24 seconds and still dropping. Keep in mind, in our previous successful flights, it was T minus 16 seconds that the apoapsis started coming back up. So that is what we are looking at. And we, that, that does mean we had quite a little, a lot of cushion, right? Quite a lot of cushion. So that's also great to know. Getting some decent orbital speeds here. Apoapsis is getting up to 58 kilometers. T minus 19. Pitching nose down a little bit here. Still T minus 19. We're up to 60 kilometer apoapsis. Sixty-two, and we're going back up. We're actually going back up more quickly, which surprises me, considering I made that mistake with the uh, landing gear. Then again, maybe we dropped more weight than we put on. That's a possibility, I suppose. So we're just continually holding at this 45-degree attitude for right now. Apoapsis is up to 65 kilometers. And you can see our orbital velocity is creeping on up. We're going to be switching over to prograde quite soon here. Not quite yet, though. I want our apoapsis to be officially in space before we switch to prograde. And it is as of now. Fantastic. Let's switch to pure prograde at this time. And you can see our time to apoapsis is beginning to drop. That's fine. We fully expect that. We are looking at getting additional horizontal speed right now. We are now officially in space, which means that these are operating at peak efficiency. T minus 25 to apoapsis. We're still not in orbital camera mode. But that's okay. Only about 200 more meters per second before we get into orbit. Actually, isn't it 300? I think it's like 300. That's okay. I mean, we know that we burn out almost all of our fuel getting into orbit. This will require a refueling mission through this Clampatron docking port if we want to actually go anywhere. But we will definitely be able to go some places with this. Now said, this is a lot of weight that is kind of useless. And this is why I don't really like space planes, but here we are. Fantastic. We are entering orbital mode now. And we are in orbit. Very nice. Let's just hold here. Beautiful. We've still got 74 seconds of burn. Let's extend our solar panels here. 
And look at that. It's not perfectly uh, circular, but that's okay. Technically, if we wanted to circularize it, we should bump around over to retrograde here. And just burn this a little bit. Uh, not quite now, but in a couple of seconds. And we're going to need to bring this down anyway, so we might as well try. Yeah, we're just going to circularize it about like that. That's pretty close. Nice. And let's just go like this. Very nice. Okay, so we're going to warp around. Actually, we're, we're just going to continue to burn this down here. And we're going to bring this down to about 30 kilometers. Now, this is going to be pretty intense. There's no doubt about that. I'm going to close these photovoltaic panels. I know we never got any charge from them. We were never really intended to get charge from them on this exact flight. We're going to go over to radial out. Never mind. We're going to go to normal. That's what we want. We're going to go up to normal. And we are going to attempt to hold... Not this attitude, but we're going to go belly first. So, like, this attitude here. We're also going to deploy our air brakes. Not that they're going to be tremendously useful at this attitude, but we're not going to be able to hold this attitude. That's the thing. Okay. We are pretty much ready for our re-entry here. And this is our re-entry profile. It definitely feels bizarre. Completely bizarre. And we have to remember if we take these Corvettes anywhere, we have to remember that we need a pretty shallow re-entry angle because <laughs> there is no heat shielding whatsoever here. But I'm hoping that these will both help us hold this attitude, and if we fail to hold this attitude, they'll help us slow down much more effectively. In fact, let's go ahead and set their deploy angle to be 90 degrees. There we go. And I'm going to bump their authority limiter up to, like, 21 degrees. There we go. Okay, let's rotate over this way a bit, and we're going to be starting to catch the atmosphere quite shortly here. I'm going to time warp until we get there. There we go. Okay, so we're going to try to hold this attitude as best we can. It's not going to be great. Does Valentina end up dying here? Possibly, but I think with the air brakes, it should be pretty safe. All things considered. Hello, son. And you can see here that we are beginning to drop our apoapsis and periapsis pretty appreciably already. And that is, of course, to be expected. There is a lot of surface area here. Like, a whole lot of surface area. So we're trying to just hold this attitude as best we can. And if we fail, then that's what these air brakes are for. They're also here to help us hold the attitude. Our apoapsis is dropping, not tremendously quickly. We're still pretty high up in the atmosphere, but given how high up we are in the atmosphere, this is much more effective aero braking than I'm used to, and it's just because of the ridiculous surface area on this. Like, that is absurd surface area for what we've got here. You can see here, our speed is currently holding... And we just now went into flight mode. Our speed is actually already dropping. Just because of how insane our surface area here is. Now we could hold radial here. But I'm... Am I comfortable with this? Let's flip it. Radial out. Okay. And we're coming in like so. 
and we're just going to try to hold this attitude. Our speed is still dropping, not tremendously quickly, but it will be dropping much more quickly soon. We've bled off a huge amount of our horizontal speed, I feel like. Actually, our periapsis is still all the way around on the other side of Kerbin. Okay, we've not bled off that much. We've bled off, actually, a lot of altitude from our periapsis. But now is when things are going to start to get a lot spicier. These are all of our drogue shoots here. And then these are our three main shoots. And once again, these air brakes, they're not going to be very useful at this orientation. That's not the point. The point that they're trying to do here is help us hold this orientation for as long as possible. And if we fail to hold this orientation, they will begin doing the air braking. That's the idea here. We're definitely decelerating quite a lot already. These air brakes are overheating. That's definitely not something that I expected to see here. Mostly because they're basically parallel to our to our airflow. Okay, we are flipping. We don't have enough control surfaces to hold this. And so we're going to try to go for retrograde and burn off some speed here. Okay. I mean, this is fine. We can definitely do this. We're okay with that. That slows us quite appreciably. The next question is, once we are slowed, are we going to be able to hold radial again? I don't know. We have dropped a lot of speed here. These guys are facing kind of the wrong way to be as effective as possible here. I'm not sure if it actually matters for them, though, for these air brakes. That does mean that we're not having the heating issue. And our speed is actually quite acceptable right now. We might be able to come around to prograde, but I'm going to try going back to radial out. Now that our speed is at minimum here. Let's try to hold radial out. And we're currently going basically edge on, you can see. But that now turns. Okay, look at that. We're much better able to hold that, and we are reducing our speed dramatically here. Yeah, this is fairly good as long as we don't start seeing overheat effects. We are flipping back around here. Let's just try to make it to prograde at this point, and we'll rely on our air brakes. Okay, this is the tumbling that we saw previously. It feels like it's much more under control. It's not under control, but it feels more under control. And you can see here our speed has dropped extremely dramatically to the point where we're now able to release our drogue shoots. And that's what I'm going to do here. Hmm. I guess we're still too high up for the drogue shoots to deploy. That's fine. There they go. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Okay. Sounds good. Now the mains. And we're at too high a pressure for them as well. So realistically, we'd want to fly a little lower. That definitely felt more under control. Now the question is... What will it look like? And I, I just want to let the aerodynamic cards fall where they may here. What will it look like as we approach the ground? That's the question. Again, this is a real test flight here. And we're apparently coming down very near a city. What could possibly go wrong? Hmm. 
deploying landing gear. Now, we know we should be pulled upright by the parachute force when those deploy. With our six-point parachute system here. Actually, this is a seven-point parachute system. It feels like we're coming down very quickly, but we actually kind of aren't. And you can also see here that our vertical speed is going away faster than our horizontal. And I think that's because of our lifting force from our wings here. I mean, we're just gliding right now. But I'm pretty sure that was a wing lifting force thing happening there. Technically, we're going back up, but that doesn't last. And now we're going down, basically purely vertical. So that was definitely a wing lifting event happening there. Very good to know. And I want to try to hold SAS. Right around here if we can. Like anywhere at the horizon here is good. Uh, we're flipping. Let's turn that SAS back off. That appears to be causing issues. And then this would pull us back upright approximately anyway. Eventually. Let's just help it out a little bit with our rudder control. Hmm. Overshot. I mean, this isn't shocking considering our lifting forces here, right? So we're moving at about 70 meters per second here. We should be moving much, much more slowly once our chutes deploy, but we've definitely got some weirdness with our lifting force here. I mean, it's almost like airplanes aren't supposed to be landed like this or something. <laughs> Vertical landing on a fixed wing, fixed engine craft. Like, it's th there's definitely no problems here. So that's our drogue chutes deploying. And they're bringing us down to around 30 meters per second for right now. I'm going to turn the SAS on and we're going to try to hold here. Okay, the SAS is definitely causing more issues than it's helping when we're doing this. Okay. A lot of this speed is built by the tumble motion as we rotate around our pivot point here. I think once our mains deploy, we should land in an okay fashion. I'm going to go ahead and retract our air brakes at this point. They are going to impact the ground. If we don't retract them, I believe. And we should be seeing our mains deploy now. Now, we could try to glide this in, right, and land it that way. That's another way that we could do this. But I'm lazy, and I'm not confident in my ability to do that. <laughs> That's what that boils down to. I'm a little surprised that we are coming in at this attitude. And I'm wondering if we can pitch down. That does not appear to currently be possible. Interesting. We might have to rethink this landing sequence. However, we should be landing slow enough that we may lose these engines, but we shouldn't lose really anything else. I was definitely expecting to... I wasn't expecting the lifting force, I guess, during this landing procedure. Okay, well, this is definitely coming in slower than we did in the previous simulation, so that's a bonus. But that lifting force is kind of bonkers. Kaboom. It actually didn't blow up the nuclear engines. Which I'm shocked about. Okay, yeah, that's kind of funny. That is kind of funny. That's part of the brakes action group. 
Okay, well, I'm going to call that a successful-ish flight. The landing was awkward. But it overall worked largely according to plan. So I think that we can safely cross the Corvettes off of our list now. We do have multiple craft and multiple bases that we would be able to refuel it at. So there we go. We've got a Corvette. Good to go. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I'll see you all next time when we will continue on our construction.